promote and support the demand of broadband-enabled services and applications to stimulate growth in the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to please briefly outline what has been accomplished and what needs to be realized, what needs to be done to realize our strategic objective uh, with the support of the Minister of Post and Telecom and other uh, sector players, private investors, and our international partners. Now, if you remember, in 2010, the LTA led the push by the government of Liberia to finance the connection of Liberia to ACE, Africa Post to Europe. That's the undersea fiber optic cable, bringing for the first time an immense capacity of high-speed broadband to Liberia. A public-private partnership led to the establishment of CCL, the Cable Consortium of Liberia, to manage the wholesale broadband supply. An example of the impact of broadband, as an example of the impact of broadband, these numbers will tell you the story. In 2010, less than 2% of Liberian population had access to internet and only slow 2G speed at best. Now today, upwards 29% or more of the population have access to 3G and 4G speeds of internet connection. Before high capacity broadband arrived in Liberia, just 24% of the population could access expensive telephone services. Today, that number is above 73%. The price <laughs> the price of services has also gone down as a result of broadband availability. In 2010, one gigabyte of capacity was priced at above 1,200 United States dollars. Customers are now paying at most two dollars for similar capacity. So ACE broadband capacity has had a major impact on the greater Monrovia areas and populated urban cities. But the realization of strategic ICT objectives requires distribution of that broadband capacity throughout the rest of Liberia. That is why granting of a license to an infrastructure service provider, C-Square, is such a major deal. LTA has amended C-Square's license allowing them to deploy fiber optic cables anywhere and everywhere within the Republic of Liberia. <laughs> While congratulating C-Square on one hand, we must on the other hand encourage them not only to move quickly on rolling out the fiber, but also to reevaluate its cost model with a view of bringing down prices. C-Square must also work on making a convincing business case for network operators and other service providers to utilize their infrastructure. The LTA does have a responsibility to ensure that an infrastructure provider operating critical bottleneck facilities do so using market-driven cost-based <coughs> infrastructure. When prices come down for operators, prices also will come down for the consumers. And that's a win-win scenario for all. While making an effort to attract and retain private investment in telecommunications, we understand that we, in the public sector, must do much more to sustain a competitive, and predictable operating environment for private capital. We are working on improving interagency communications and collaboration to ease some of the red tape and confusion faced by our private partners in development. As a first step, the LTA is finalizing draft regulations and guidelines on infrastructure deployments with standards to provide licensees with the support 
they need to access public rights away, and while they facilitate the role of a vital telecommunications infrastructure. While on the subject of expanding access to broadband communications, we would be remiss not to express our gratitude to USAID, the United States Agency for International Development, for its ongoing support on policy studies on the broadband plan for Liberia and the exploration of TV white space, bringing communications to unserved and underserved communities in Liberia. Thank you. Very much. Bridging the digital divide is a key focus of the LTA through the Universal Access Fund. Uh, the Universal Access Fund is currently piloting a low-orbit satellite technology to subsidize communication services to remote rural communities, communities where uh, commercial, commercial entities may not have economic uh, reasons to go. With your permission, I'd like to now briefly discuss other initiatives and programs essential for generating demand for the use of ICT. The LTA has championed the establishment of the IXP, the Liberia's Internet Exchange Point, to keep Liberia's telecommunications traffic local, faster, and cheaper. In collaboration with Internet Society, Orange Liberia, Lone Star Cell, MTN, and others, a private sector-led management structure has been put into place to encourage the generation of local, social, commercial content, applications, and services. The, the process has been a little slow, and, and slower than we anticipated, which it may, we may need to infuse more materials, financial resources, um, and we also need the commitment from the service provider to start using the ISP. As more and more Liberians interact business online, the issue of data protection and privacy, cyber crimes, and authenticated digital identity must be comprehensively addressed. In this regard, the LTA is closely collaborating with National Identification Registry, NIR, to link telephone SIM card registration to the National Biometrics ID database. This will aid in fraud protection, consumer protection, and national security. The LTA is supporting the Ministry of Post and Telecom in developing a national cybersecurity policy. This policy seeks to achieve a secure, resilient cyber environment for the protection of Liberia's digital space. One means of mitigating the response of cyber crimes, cyber threats, is through the operation of Computer Emergency Response Team, or what you call a CERT. Setting up a CERT is a very cost-intensive venture. And I want to seize this opportunity to launch an appeal to our development partners in the telecom space to consider the provisions of financial and technical support in bringing to life a search for Liberia. So I'm sure I've exceeded my allotted time for these remarks. <laughs> Please permit me to conclude by stressing the importance of telecommunications quality of service. The quality of service is the glue that holds all factors of telecom together. We've all experienced <coughs> drop calls, overbilling, unconnected calls, slow browsing, and, and a lot of other annoying and at times costly issues resulting to congested networks and lack of sufficient investments in infrastructure. To address these issues, and in the interest of our consumers, the LTA has concluded its draft quality of service regulation, which uh, establishes key performance indicators 
that network operators will be expected to achieve. The draft regulations will be accessible for public consultation. In closing, I extend my thanks to C-squared country manager Estelle Okofio Sowa and her team for working with, with the LTA and planning this event. We look forward to working with each and every one of you as we go through this digital transformation journey together. Thank you and God bless you.
All of these challenges makes the need for an environment in which the government and the private sector are aligned in their efforts and, in, and their investments towards closing the digital infrastructure gap and achieving an accessible, safe, and affordable broadband across gender and geography even more critical. As Madam Edwina has touched on Liberia's digital journey, and you've come a long way, and there's still a long way ahead of us. The key challenges we believe we face in achieving this digital transformation include the strengthening of coordination, the coordination framework, and I'm glad to hear and see the efforts around coordinating areas like road construction. For us as an infrastructure owner, when a road is being constructed and five kilometers of your fiber gets pulled up, that's very painful. Um, and so that is an, an, an important way. Right of way, I'm glad to hear that being mentioned as well. That's also something that contributes to the cost of deployment. Aligning of policies. And uh, while I've only ever been in the ICT sector, I've, I'm now a pig farmer and I'm learning a little bit about the agri sector. But the ICT sector does seem very um, shadowed by what looks like conflict traditionally or historically between policies' uh, desires and the private sector's desires. Um, I was at an event almost the same as this yesterday morning before I got on my flight in Ghana with the NCA, which is the equivalent to LTA, and all the industry stakeholders. There was a new board being uh, brought on, and so we were meeting them. And the board chair used the word collaboration over and over again. And that's what needs to happen. There needs to really be a spirit of collaboration between the policy makers, the regulators, and the private sector. We're all trying to achieve the same thing. I know one of the big challenges is the ICT sector is one of the big tax generators, revenue sources. And I understand if I was in government, sometimes I might get a bit distracted by the need to generate revenue over really what enables uh, growth and adoption of the sector. And then of course the need for a massive scaling up of investment and dedication of resources. And one area that I'm very much championing now is the use of public infrastructure, especially in the area of power, for increasing distribution of uh, internet access. And it's an area that I would encourage the minister and the regulator in partnership with the power sector to look at um, and see how that infrastructure can be enabled for all to come online. c is absolutely convinced that public-private partnerships are the best way to, to quickly achieve national aspirations for broadband and next generation infrastructure. In Liberia, we're particularly proud of our partnership through the government of Liberia, with the government of Liberia, through the minister of Coast. Um, and USA to connect over 50 government institutions. Uh, I think on that front, we absolutely have not made enough noise um, and celebrated that enough. I'm not sure in Ghana that 50 ministries, and if anyone in Ghana is hearing me, that might get in trouble, but have fiber into those buildings. And I know just getting fiber doesn't solve everything. You need the local area network, you need Power. You need devices, and then you need educated people that are future ready um, and are willing to embrace uh, technology. When we landed at the airport yesterday, I was so excited to see that there was an app, which unfortunately I didn't know about in advance, um, for you to register for your COVID test. I could see a lot of effort had been put into making the airport quote, ready for, for people coming in. But then the power went off. And that's when technology is absolutely useless. Um, and there was nothing we could do, and we were all looking at the green forms and wishing we could just fill in a green form and move on. So, you know, there's multiple challenges that we face, and we absolutely believe that public sector and private sector partnering is the way uh, to go forward. Liberia's challenges, as I've already said, are not much different than across the continent. Nearly 300 million Africans still live more than 50 kilometers from a fiber broadband connection. 50 kilometers. Oh, only about 35% of the population in developing countries has access to the internet. 
and this is compared to over 80% in developed economies. So there's still much to be done. But today I'm super excited that we're here and we've got our newly issued national license that as Madam Edwina has already said, allows us to build anywhere in Liberia, of course, where there is demand. Um, and I really want to thank the LTA board. It's been a bit of a journey, um, but patience is something that I have been overly gifted with. Um, and so I thank you for the license. Um, and I thank all our partners, the MNOs and the ISPs that are here today for working with us. And I know Madam Edwina has put me in a hot spot around pricing. Um, so I was cringing as she was talking about that. You know, if you don't sell, we don't sell. Um, and so absolutely getting the pricing right at a way that we can continue to invest and you can grow your businesses is what we're all about. And it is about us partnering and having those conversations, which sometimes aren't easy, but um, you know, we need to persevere. I promised Bluecrest this morning, Rochelle, sorry, I don't know what price they want, but I've told them we'll give it to them. So, Bluecrest. <laughs> on uh, fiber. Um, and it is one of our challenges, again, as a broadband infrastructure provider. Our fiber runs in front of many buildings and institutions, but we're not responsible for and licensed to serve them directly. So we absolutely do rely on the MNOs and ISPs to do the selling, and we'll, we'll connect into those uh, businesses. So we're going to continue our uh, commitment and investment into deploying broadband infrastructure in order to bring high-speed data services to homes and businesses where it's needed most. And one of the next areas that we're looking at is building the backbone to Ivory Coast and to Guinea. Um, I know that ACE Cable has been a bit unstable this week, and that's just a perfect reminder of why Liberia needs to have a second source of uh, connectivity coming into the country. And I hope together we're gonna to make this work. Rochelle, who's the Liberia country manager, and I and the team have been talking about this backbone for probably three years. Um, and I hope that 2022 is the year that we're gonna see this happen. Amen? Amen. 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 I'll go off script for just a minute. As we've traveled that uh, backbone route, um, and I talked about many Africans being still being 50 kilometers away from a fiber connection. There are many communities we will go through that um, will not benefit immediately from that infrastructure that's going through them. And so I hope, I'm going to copy here from Madam Edwina, uh, that with our development partners and with the private sector, we'll be able to put packages together that either enable like community Wi-Fi's, services that bring new people online who maybe can't afford it today, but will be able to pay for it in two years. And we need to continually look, continuously look at how we bring more people online that become paying customers down the line. I firmly believe that increased connectivity and digital transformation has a positive knock-on effect on economic and development growth especially for our motivated and vibrant youth, of which Liberia has many. If there's one thing C squared has proven over the past three years in Liberia, is that we build infrastructure that guarantees a better, safer, faster, faster customer experience for the future. So get ready, Liberia. The future is promising and exciting, and we're here to fulfill our investments and commitments. So thank you very much. The uh, West Africa Regional Manager of Service Provider. Still, I could be so well speaking. So, folks, in case you are just joining her. Here at the Mama Pan Hotel, where Ladies, we will be able to learn. I would be stunned as welcome.
the Minister of Post and Telecommunications, Councillor Kopokora, to deliver our keynote address. Agenda for prosperity and development. 
PAP. The expansion of fiber infrastructure to conserve area in order to provide network services to our citizens and bases in a desirable goal which government is looking forward to achieve. The construction of a fiber pipeline to connect our neighbors, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Ivory Coast, which will strengthen Liberia's drive to migrate to a digital economy and will also relieve our sole reliable reliability on the ice cable is another liable milestone that the government, along with its partners, is currently considering. The decision to host this event manifests your continued cooperation and willingness to partner with government in order to achieve its desired goal of making communication accessible to its citizens and residents within the digital space. We want to thank you again for showing much enthusiasm in the ICT sector. <laughs> In consideration of this high enthusiasm shown to expand our invest, to expand your investment for the ultimate group of our citizens and residents within our digital space, we want to again pledge the government of Liberia complete support to your investment and your future expansion program. Finally, let me use this movement to thank you say, and other partners for their willingness to support or to be a part of our digital drive. Our partner, our partner valuable <coughs> support into the sector, into the ICT sector and other sectors in Liberia is a testimony of our government cordial relationship with them. We, we look forward to a more support for our partners as we move forward in our digital economy. The protection of our cyber space and other key areas in the asset sector. Let me also use this provocation to call on all sector players in the asset sector that coordination, collaboration, and mutual respect are key in achieving our complete digital economy as the development of Liberia is paramount than self-interest. Before I take my seat, let me again chairman our MNOs and sector players that the president, president, we have takes interest in bringing essential services to our concerned population. That is why he has taken a lot, lot more interest in the uh, universal access program. This program will, according to our president, will, will succeed, and whatever support that is needed from government, we will also get there. But more importantly, the support from our MNOs and ISP to the, to the program is important. You, because we have a regulation that supports that program, the establishment of the Universal Access Program in Liberia. And the regulation is plain. That regulation provides that at the end of a year, within three months into the, the following year, you are supposed to make your contribution into the form. There are no other conditions set in there that you will you should wait for a bill before you do that. The regulation says you should make your contribution to the form within three months at the end of the period. Now, information we are getting is that people are our, our MNOs and ISPs are waiting for a bill before they can make their contribution. We want to encourage you to make your contribution based upon the regulation. Because we in Liberia we have six months that we can actually work in Liberia. After another six months, the rainy season comes. You can't get out of the city. You can't get in many parts of the, of the country. And the services under the Universal Access Program is intended for unserved area. And most of the unserved area have challenges to reach in there. So we want to just encourage you to work with our LTA uh, commissioners, whatever problem that may be there in, in getting some of these uh, uh, 
arrangement through, let us know. I'm sure they are capable to have this set up. Again, I want to thank you for this program. And we want to continue to encourage our partners to work together. And, and, and uh, there was something that was mentioned uh, by, by the acting chair of the LTA, the establishment of, of SEP in Liberia, our computer response team. This is important. It's part of our, our, our new ICT policy, and we are reviewing all of those to make sure that they come up. You know, when we, when we started our, our program, the ICT program in Liberia, there were many short forms or shortcomings. We are trying to address all of that. Initially, we needed the necessary legal framework, which we didn't have. Now we have completed a draft cyber crime act, which is now awaiting to be sent to the legislature. We are now working in collaboration with other sectors, especially the LTA, on the Personal Data Protection Act, which we don't have. All of these have been taken into consideration. And with the support of our partner, I believe we will get there. Will be a little bit slow, but not only our partners in Liberia have been supporting our ICT sector. We have a, the uh, uh, Equus have been very forceful. As I speak, Equus has donated a, uh, a forensic lab for for cyber cyber crime in for Liberia. Free. <laughs> All that government needs to do right now is to just complete the renovation of the site, and they will just bring it along with. To make sure that we are able to protect our cyberspace. So there are many challenges. I just talk to you so that all of us will know that we are working. It might be slow, but we'll get there with your support. Thank you very much. Regional Manager Estelle Cofero, so also my neighbor at the table. C Squared Country Lead Rochelle Bannerman. Ah. I understand Moni Captain, a chair person of the board of LEC is here as well. Hard to see everybody. I also wanted to make sure that um, I'm you know who I am. I am the Deputy Chief of Mission of the U.S. Embassy, Joel Mabry, um, not the USA Director. And that would be Jim Wright. Uh, I send greetings from Jim Wright and my ambassador, Ambassador McCarthy. And I'd like to make sure you know that the fact that you guys the Deputy Director of the USA is very <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be part of this Liberia Digital Transformation event today witness to the signing of the C Square Backbone License Agreement with the Liberia Telecommunication Authority of the United States. I want to uh, in my part the microphone I want to recognize and appreciate all who are present for your commitment of what amounts to years of planning, development, and collaboration together. Why don't you please give yourselves a hand? Thank you. This is a big moment for 
for Liberia's future, and others have uh, said as much. With the finalization of this public-private partnership, we can now see a future where the internet is accessible to all Liberians, paving the way for the expansion and improvement of education, health, and other government services in rural areas, and bringing opportunity for economic development through access to information and markets. The C squared backbone represents a $10 million foreign direct investment in Liberia's future. It is, it is these types of private sector investments and partnerships that bring economic prosperity and development to this country. It is hard to overstate the far-reaching and positive impact that bringing fiber cable through the heart of the country will have on underserved counties in Liberia's development, from increased economic growth to improved agricultural productivity and enhanced access to education and health care. The extension of reliable access to the internet into the center of the country is certain to produce economic results that will further the development of the interior with the potential to benefit all Liberians. Internet connectivity increases access to information about the availability of goods and services. I know some people are thinking Google, Americans are thinking Amazon, and all these shopping sites. Right to do so. This in turn reduces transaction costs for buyers and sellers. Reduced transaction costs in turn increase the efficiency of markets. This benefits all Liberians by freeing up capital and labor for other projects that grow the economy. Increased internet availability increases access to educational services and resources benefiting students and the workforce. Liberia's health sector is poised to benefit the most from increased internet productivity. In fact, C squared invested in Liberia because of a partnership with the US government in response to the Ebola pandemic. During the Ebola pandemic, excuse me, epidemic, Liberia rel relied on slow paper-based communications and information systems, which made it difficult to know how the epidemic was spreading and target a rapid response. I know that's a recent memory for most of us. Better information and communication systems like the one established by C squared could have helped save lives. This fiber optic cable will be vital for disease surveillance and health information systems, the same ones that proved vital during the fight against COVID-19. These communication systems are critical for the prevention, detection, and response to future public health crises. Reliable, fast, and accessible internet can improve the lives of all Liberians, as I've said before. Agreements like this will help Liberia and extreme poverty. But as with other power sector, I should say as with the power sector, these benefits will only be available if customers pay their user fees. Just as the government of Liberia has taken steps to reduce its arrears with the Liberia Electric Company, Corporation Partner, LEC, it should commit to the timely payment of its past and future bills for internet service, thus setting a good example for the rest of the country and ensuring the financial sustainability of this critical service. The signing of this license agreement today, coupled with the private sector investment and partnership between the government of Liberia and C Square, will bring the transformative power of the internet to communities across the country, communities that have never previously benefited from such services. We can only imagine the impact of these services on the communities, businesses, educational institutions, and organizations across this country. Before I finish, I definitely want to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this event today. And I look forward to the investment this community with people of Liberia. And I'd like to finish on an anecdote that I hope will result in people giving each other high fives at the end for thinking about the accomplishments. Uh, I went to high school in Nairobi, Kenya. And this was back in the 70s, so about 50 years ago, a little less than 50 years ago. And my father and mother would, of course, want to make phone calls to the United States so we could speak to my brothers and other family members back in the States. How did we go about doing that? So 
no cell phones, no computers. What we did in Nairobi, and the minister, I'm sure this is probably the experience of all of our countries at one point in time. My parents would call on the landline. Remember what a landline is? <laughs> they would call the post, or the PTT, different names in different countries. And we would get an operator. And you can imagine the operator with all this equipment. And we would say, here's the number we would like to call in the United States. And the operator would take down the number, we would hear some clicking clack, and she would say, usually she, as I remember, would say, I'll get back to you. So my parents would hang up the phone, and we would wait, sometimes minutes, sometimes hours, and then at some point, the phone would ring. And we would pick up the phone, and guess who was on the other end? Our family, <laughs> several hours later. The second part of the story, and I'm sure many of you can relate, it was, after all, a long distance call. So what would we do to communicate? We would shout, because my family was in California, which is quite a distance away from Nairobi. So the five or six minute call, because you really couldn't afford to speak for more than about five or six minutes, because my parents would be looking at, at the bill, the eventual bill that would come for a minute. But what was the cost in those days? Probably a dollar a minute or something. But we would shout. So for five minutes, my parents would shout, and my family and the other would say, why are you shouting? Because it's a long distance call. <laughs> Anyway, I would say um, turn to your neighbors, give each other a five pie, a five pie, a, a pie five, excuse me, a pat on the back. But it is because of people in this room that today we're not shouting at each other during long distance phone calls. We're not having to call an operator to make arrangements that may or might or might not result in a phone call with our loved ones uh, clear across the world. So thank you all for uh, having us here today. Welcome, this is from British Africa. We say thank you for being there. Uh, we are yeah, at the Mama Point Hotel where uh, Liberia Digital Transformation uh, Program has initiated hosted by the Liberia uh, Communication Authority in partnership with C Square. We are here.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's beautiful. Our signature is a big, big topic. Particularly, we wanted to ensure that Liberians are given a fair share in the implementation, the rollout of this fiber, and even at some point in time, the possibility of being owners in this process. And those are difficult negotiations when we were, were stuck. But then, Estelle, Esther brought to the company, C-Square, a young, dynamic Liberian, young lady. Come on, here. You know, as we get everybody to taste, I want everybody to look at this young lady. She broke the car. This is the country manager of C-Square. 
she broke the tie. It was not Estelle, it was not a CEO, it was not Usain, it was not, she broke the tie. And she broke the tie by reaching out to her fellow Liberian female members of the board <laughs> and used that to reach the rest of us to negotiate and to move the ball forward. So I would like for all of us to give her a just to <laughs> She did a good job and today, because of her intervention as the country manager and as a librarian, working with c -Square, she did her job and she delivered. And so with that said, there are other things like the chair mentioned and the um, minister mentioned as it relates to universal access. I happen to be the coordinating uh, commissioner on that program. We see the signing of this C squared license, amendment of the license, as a positive thing for the universal access. Um, we have right now two pilot sites that is ongoing in some of the remotest areas of Liberia, Pelican, Grand Cru, and uh, Banabo and Gide in uh, Bapalu, that have not had any type of access to the grid, the, the sector at all. Now, as a result of these two sites, you have over 10,000 Liberians in these two communities that have access, full access, to 2G, at the very least 2G communications. We intend to upgrade to 3G in the upcoming contracts, um, but we anticipate that with the hub, which has a, a capacity to host up to 200 sites that we have with our contractor now, and with the rollout of Orange and MTM over the next year of the rollout plan, that more underserved and unserved communities will benefit from the Universal Access Program, not only for voice and data, but also the e-program, the e-health program, and the e-education program, which are two paramount um, <laughs> where a lot of you who come from the, uh, the various counties can be able to teach classes within the remote areas um, from the hub here at the LDS that we have. And it will be a pleasure of mine to one day escort the two of you um, to see what's going on over there so you can better have a better understanding of the program as it's going to roll out and whatever help that uh, we can achieve from you it will be well, most welcome. So with that being said, uh, we don't have much time. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. And today is not just a good day for Liberia because of the sign of this. Today is a great day, and we appreciate it. Thank you.